Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Judge eternal throned in splendor, who didst give John of the cross strength of purpose and faith that sustained him, even through the dark night of the soul, shed thy light on all who love thee in unity with Jesus Christ our Savior, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a, a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked at it, and, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of, the good, of, of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm of wonder for today is the 121st psalm, which is found on page 779 of the Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 121, which we'll recite together in unison. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. <laughs> 
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said to you that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean to, by saying to us, A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They said, What does he mean by this, a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Are you discussing among yourselves what I mean when I said, A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will... And you, will, and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but her pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain, because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish, because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. John of the Cross, and I uh, delight in John of the Cross, not because I'm an expert in his writing, which is what makes him famous, but because I am crazy about Spain, and particularly the places in Spain that are associated with John the Cross. So I, I mean, in my opinion, that makes me a more devoted uh, person to, to John the Cross rather than less so, but you can be a judge of that. I'll read you a little bit about it. The Carmelite the theologian John of the Cross has been called the poet's poet, spirit of flame and celestial and divine. John was born at 15, in 1542 at Fontiveros near Avila, Spain. After his third birthday, his father died, leaving his mother and her children reduced to poverty. John received elementary education in an orphanage at Medina del Campo. By the age of 17, he had learned carpentry, tailoring, sculpturing, and painting through apprenticeships to local craftsmen. After university studies with the Jesuits, John entered the Carmelite order in Medina del Campo and completed his theological studies in Salamanca. In 1567, he was ordained to the priesthood and recruited by Teresa of Avila for the reformation of the Carmelite order. John became disillusioned with what he considered the laxity of the Carmelites, and in 1568 he opened a monastery of disgust Carmelites who have strict observance, and uh, an act that met with sharp resistance from the general chapter of the Carmelites. John was seized, taken to Toledo, and imprisoned for the in the monastery there. During nine months of great hardship, he comforted himself by writing, writing poetry. It was while he was in prison that he composed the great number of part of his luminous masterpiece, The Spiritual Catacomb, as well as a number of shorter poems. His other major works include The Ascent of Mount Carmel, The Living Flame of Love, and The Dark Night. It is this latter work, Noche Obscura del Alma, that gave the English language the phrase Dark Night of the Soul. After a severe illness, John died on December 14th in 1591, in Ubeda in southern Spain. What do I want to say to you about St. About John? I don't know what I want to say to you. You should all go to Salamanca and follow in St. John's footsteps because uh, Salamanca is one of the most beautiful places uh, in Spain. And we should be attentive as uh, in the day that we um, the day that we are celebrating the life and ministry of a poet to the poetry of the scriptures, particularly the poetry of the Psalms. And I, I don't know why, but I felt called to, um, to point out how easy it is to misread the 121st Psalm. In fact, I delight to misread the beginning of the 121st Psalm. Maybe you do too. My whole life, 
I have loved the, uh, what I think is an incorrect reading of this psalm, and I still love an incorrect reading of the psalm. Um, it's often associated with, with the burial rites, and um, the, uh, the first lines of the psalm we know are these. I lift up my eyes, or in the old translation, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from where is my help to come. The punctuation makes a big difference. Here's how I like to misread this song. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help is to come. I'm looking to the hills from whence I expect my help to come. I'm, I, I think that's not a ter terrifically responsible reading of the text. The more responsible of reading of the text suggests that um, the second part of the phrase is a, is a question, not an answer. I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where is my help to come? The lifting up of one's eyes to the hills is in the psalmist's intention, I think, meant to elicit a question, not an answer from us. But if you misread the psalm, you can get an answer from it, not a question. Now, we could argue whether or not whether that misreading of it is a misreading or a right reading. I, I, I'm not John of the Cross. I don't, well, I don't know that he knew the answer to that either, but um, he probably spent more, he had more time in his hands to think about it than I do. So uh, he thought about it, no doubt. But um, in a way, it doesn't matter, does it? Whether or not the second part of that opening verse of the 121st Psalm is is a question or an answer. What matters, especially in this world, is that I lift up my eyes to the hills. In fact, what really matters has nothing to do with the hills whatsoever. What really matters is that I lift up my eyes. And actually, what really matters has nothing to do with my eyes, unless my eyes represent something about the interior of my soul. And that in lifting up my eyes, I somehow lift up my soul to the possibility that, that God is doing something. And this, I think, is the intention of the psalmist, which I think is also uh, one of the intentions that, that permeates um, the spirituality of St. John of the Cross, that we have to lift up our eyes, the eyes of our souls, to see what it is that God is doing, because we are disinclined in the world to notice what God is doing necessarily. We can easily miss what God is doing. We don't even get to the point of whether or not what God is doing is a, providing us with questions or answers. We don't even see what God is doing. Why? Because we are distracted, as Jesus says to Martha, by many things. We're distracted by many things. And um, we can even distract ourselves by the worry, oh my goodness, is this, a, is this meant to be a question and answer? Who cares? Lift up your eyes. This is the message of Advent. Be awake, be alert, pay attention. Don't fall asleep, don't stare at your feet, don't look down at the earth. Keep your eyes and the eyes of your heart enlightened and elevated so that you can be awake and ready for what God is doing when God comes again. Lift up, lift up, lift up. I, I can't prove to you that John of the Cross would approve of this message, but I believe he would, I hope he would. Um, because John of the Cross knew what it was for himself and for the life to be, to have his, and for the world rather, to have eyes downcast, fixed down here. And when your eyes are fixed down here, you cannot tell what is coming. And we live in a world that cannot tell what is coming, that is not interested in coming, that doesn't care whether God provides questions or answers. But we, in this short time, and lift up our eyes to the hills or to wherever from where our help is to come.
In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Britt, Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, the members of the Congress and the courts, Tom, our governor, and Jim, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who are sick with the coronavirus, all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling for justice that's been denied, and who are working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society. And all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, especially Chris, Sue, George, John, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Rodney, Howard, Richard, Margaret, Will, Lisa, Clayton, Liz, Livia, Barbara, Sam, Olivia, Alessia, Hannah, Rick, Anne, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray as always for peace in our time, for an end to the war in Ukraine, and for an end to the gunfire that takes so many lives in this city. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear especially all those who died from the coronavirus in the past year and all those in the past day and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of blessed Mark the Evangelist, of blessed John of the Cross, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by the thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may never hereafter serve and please thee in unity of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heart and repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, God forever. brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord receive this sacrifice of my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both of our heart and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord of most high. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and may appear before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. 
Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost see us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, World without end. Amen.
May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path, so that you may be ready to greet him when he shall come again in his ma glorious majesty. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.